Hey guys, welcome back to Man Time. Today's episode, we are going to have a lot of fun. Uh, if you're just joining me on this channel, uh, fun to me means moving dirt, running equipment, uh, preparing for making a uh, path down through the woods here for a water line for a house that's going to be back up in that area somewhere over there on the other side of my hayfield. Uh, you can see here I've got um, the backhoe set up on the other side. Uh, so fun today is running equipment. Um, that's going to be this four-wheel drive Mahindra tractor, uh, moving some dirt, and then on the other side there, backhoe. I've still got some down trees. I'm going to cut that up for some firewood and then finish out uh, the um, land bridge down here with some concrete bags. I've already got those concrete bags on there. It rained and they should be pretty well set up. So we'll get that dirt uh, moved and packed down on top of there and hopefully we will have a bridge um, down through the bottom of this uh, by the end of the day today and have some dirt moved and have some equipment ran and just have a lot of fun. So if it's your first time joining me, we're going to have fun today. Welcome to man time.
uh, I just got a whole lot of work done there. Um, I was actually thinking about last night how, uh, how slow my progress is going and what I can do to improve that process. And it got me thinking about uh, a book called The Goal and Ellie Goldrath, uh, who wrote The Goal. And it is basically a book on um, the best way to figure out and manufacture parts the quickest um, by finding your bottlenecks and attacking those bottlenecks. And uh, it's a great book. If you haven't read it, I suggest going out and reading The Goal. Um, that was one of the things that got me down the path of um, becoming an industrial engineer, and that's what I do at work. I figure out how to make things uh, quickly uh, with the utmost quality, um, things like that as an industrial engineer. But my bottleneck here was dirt, right? The goal is to get a path through the woods here, and the bottleneck was the dirt, always having to move the dirt using all different kinds of multiple equipment. Um, and, and it got me thinking back to uh, Timmy or Billy or whatever the kid's name was and the goal who's slowing down the line, right? So I needed to eliminate the bottleneck and uh, exploit the constraint, if you will. <laughs> and, uh, and so what I did there was there was kind of a hump uh, right in the middle here. And, you know, the goal here is to get a nice smooth grade. You don't want like a hump and then, and then down at like a 20 degree angle. Uh, you want a nice smooth grade, I guess, 10 to 15 degrees. Um, so I found that little hump and I just exploited the heck out of it, right? Uh, the box blade here and the tractor, I was actually doing a box blade um, bucket combination there. And this thing is just amazingly powerful. Um, I, I had to replace the clutch on this and, and did some engine work on it. You know, man uh, stuff that you have to do to your old junky equipment that you find on the side of the road for six grand. Actually, matter of fact, the, uh, the loader on this costs more than the tractor. So, <laughs> fun fact there. Uh, Get some junky equipment, but if you want to outfit it with some good stuff, um, sometimes that's more expensive than the equipment itself. Um, but yeah, I exploited the heck out of that little bump of dirt there, using that box blade, carrying all that dirt down. And I have just made more progress today as far as distance of this path um, than I have in a long time. So I got, got a little academic on it, uh, used the goal as, uh, as a reference in my brain. Um, how to get the most progress and uh, exploit the constraint, eliminate the bottleneck, move some dirt. <laughs> Let's go do some other stuff. I've done some stuff here while, uh, no, basically the last couple weeks, fixing this land bridge here where all these concrete bags had fell off. Um, put about 20 more on here and then moved some fill material over here and got it started coming up against this. We got some rain. Um, this week after I put these down and so today we're gonna finish this up um, get all this dirt moved down level with these concrete bags and uh, and then we should have a land bridge here.
<laughs> Sometimes you get a little unexpected hiccup like that. Apparently this wood's been here long enough and the wood itself was just kind of junk. A lot of these trees around here are what's called sweet gum trees. Um, it, it's not even almost something you could use as pulp wood. Um, I guess if you get a little bit fresher. This stuff hasn't even been here a year and this tree deteriorated all the way to the point where you can't even pick it up. It just crumbles apart. So This, this one seems like it's going to be pretty good firewood. Uh, we'll go ahead and use the O2O. Um, one pro tip for this saw, the fuel line is actually a consumable part on it. Um, from taking it apart and putting it back together so many times like I've done, um, it started leaking gas and I was like, well I changed the, um, the gasket out, the gas tank gasket, and uh, turns out the, the fuel line um, where it mates up with the carburetor it, from mating up and taking it apart so many times it had formed a certain shape and no matter what I did there um, I couldn't get it to stop leaking gas so if you've got a gas leak and you know you got a good gasket it's probably that fuel line also if it's running bad and you can't tune it out fuel line so all right let's see how this wants to run today let's do a little double choke yeah. So this is this is actually oak here, um, super hard. Um, been curing for about a year, so this is going to be perfect for firewood, campfire wood, whatever. Um, oak is going to burn for a long time. I really have no other use for it. But this tree and that tree that was just crumbling apart were cut down at the same time. And this one is super hard. Um, the 20 is probably not well suited for it, so we'll switch over to the uh, 31 AB. And, uh, of course, number one rule in chainsaws, right, repeat after me, let it warm up before you start cutting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Boy, I don't know about you, but uh, if you don't feel moved inside by the sound of this chainsaw, uh, I don't know what to tell you. Um, there, there's just no other sound more satisfying than an old saw running a absolutely perfect. That, <laughs> and something that you've worked on and you've put time and energy and money into that you got for $20 and now it's just a wood cutting monster. I mean, I've never really had a big saw, and I'm not one for like the big blade and cutting down huge trees and all that stuff. But man, just listen to this saw. Maybe, maybe some of that will come through here, because... If that doesn't get your blood flowing in the morning, I don't know what will.
Oh my goodness, what a day today, right? Whew. What did we do today? I don't know, it's been such an awesome day, I forget. Uh, let's see, we moved some dirt. We finished up a land bridge here. So all this behind us here, um, what used to just feel like a mile away, uh, is now getting pretty close. Um, like I said, I've got to get some more culvert for a portion of this creek here. If I could get upstream and figure out where it splits and cut it off upstream, I could do that, but it's kind of coming down from both sides. So it's got a now creek through here and then a little creek on the other side. This is the majority of the water that I've rerouted here, but brought a lot of that dirt down from the other side, finished off uh, the land bridge here. Um, that should hold up well. I had a uh, picture in one of my other videos there of, uh, of a neighbor. You know, I just, uh, you know, some people might ask, what's up with the bags of concrete? That doesn't seem like a very successful way to make a land bridge. Well, it's, I mean, I've got eight out of ten neighbors with a bridge like that. Um, some people use them for just their driveways to uh, fill in uh, the bar ditch alongside the road and have a culvert there so they can get in and out of their driveways. But yeah, they, they do work and they do hold up well. Um, <laughs> got to run the 31 AV. Man, this thing is just a monster, isn't it? Uh, I, I've had, um, let's see, I think this is about my fourth chainsaw. Um, and I still have a majority of the chainsaws that I used to have uh, just slowly been uh, going toward this one, right? I get the most enjoyment out of running this one out of all the other ones. I think I've got a, I've got a 350. I've got a 455, I got a 039, uh, 020, so a 39, a 20, the 31 AV, uh, 350, 455. Um, but this is the one that I go to more often than not. It's just so reliable, so durable, um, all magnesium, everything that's metal, that's, me you know, it's just like everything's metal on the thing. Uh, this little piece is plastic, but uh, this, this here is metal. I mean, <laughs> it's so durable. It's just ridiculous, and it runs so good. It runs so freaking good. And uh, even even pushing this big 20-inch uh, bar, and uh, man, it runs so good. <laughs> but uh, that's uh, that's a typical day uh, on the Man Time Ranch here. I guess you could call it Man Time Farm, Man Time Channel, whatever. Um, typical weekend for Man Time. Uh, expert at none, um, you know. But uh, try to figure it out. You know this this. It's all about learning, right? It's a process, and uh, I'm learning every day and bringing you guys along with me, watching other people on YouTube. Uh, that's why we do it, right? Learn from other people's mistakes. So, um, you know, uh, it's not going to be perfect every time, but I figure it out, and uh, and at the end of the day, the job is done, right? What I set out to do, um, may not have done it right, but it got done, so watch the video, see if you can improve on anything I did there, and maybe you will have learned something, so... That's it. <laughs> I'm going to go back to what I'm doing. You go back to what you were doing. Thanks for joining me today on Man Time, guys. And get out there. Have you some man time, too.